Now that we've done most of our blood stain science testing, the last thing that you have to learn how to do is what we call a point of origin test. So when you were working in your blood spatter flashcards, there was what we call a point of convergence. So if I have all of these blood spatter drops all around at my crime scene, I can figure out a couple of things. One, I can figure out where the person was standing when the drops were made, and that's called the point of convergence. The second thing I can figure out is what's called the point of origin. It's where the person was standing and at approximately what height they were at when a majority of the drops were uh, made. So I'm going to show you how to complete a point of origin test right now. So these are my blood drops that I have. Okay, and the first thing that I do is I take a look at the drops and I can see the directionality. I can tell that that drop was going that way based on the spines, because remember the spines always go the direction the person was traveling. This drop was headed that direction. This drop over here was going this way, so on and so forth. So I grab my meter stick, okay? I put it in the middle of the drop in the direction that the drop is going, and I draw a line all the way through, okay? So there's my line. Then I do the same thing with all the other drops. I put it in the middle. I put my meter stick in the middle of the drop and I draw a line straight through the direction that the drop is going. And I continue doing that, okay, for all of my drops. And then you notice that there is a point right here where all of the lines start to meet up. This right here is the point of convergence. This is the location where the person was standing when all of these drops were made. Okay, so that's the first thing is you draw a line through all your drops in the direction they're going and you find what's called the point of convergence. Once you find the point of convergence, you're going to take a ring stand oftentimes, okay, and this is what a ring stand looks like. You're going to put it in the center where your point of convergence is. Then we're going to find the angles of impact for all of our drops. And we know how to do that. We measure the width and the length of the drops. And then we do the sine inverse, right? And that gives us our angle of impact. And then we will use a protractor, which looks like this. And we'll put it in our drop and then we'll use string and we'll find the pathway of the drop. And that'll tell us approximately how high the person was when these drops were made. So. Right here, I'm going to start with this drop first. I'm going to measure the width of the drop, okay? And I measured the width of the drop and it was seven millimeters. Then I'm going to measure the length of the drop, not including the tail, okay? And that's 19 millimeters. So I'm going to do seven divided by 19 sine inverse, and that gives me 22 degrees. So I'm going to take my protractor Okay, I'm going to put my protractor in the center of the blood drop on the line okay, that I made to do my point of convergence. I'm going to take a piece of string. I'm going to tape it right behind where my drop is. I'm going to put my protractor in the center and I'm going to put this at 22 degrees. Okay, so at 22 degrees on my line and then I'm going to tie it to my ring. This was the exact pathway of my drop when it hit right there, okay? Because now I know it was going this direction, it was at a 22 degree angle, and so that's my direct pathway of my drop. Now I'm going to do the same thing for another drop and then another drop and another. I usually recommend you do between 5 and 10 drops at a crime scene to get a really good point of origin. So my next drop I'm going to do is over here, okay? I'm going to measure the width and the length of my drop. So the width of my drop is 8 millimeters. The length of my drop is 17 millimeters. So 8 divided by 17 sine inverse is 28 degrees. I have my string right here. Okay, I put a little piece of tape right behind my dot or my uh, blood drop. And then I'm going to take my protractor. I'm going to put it in the middle of my drop. I'm going to put my string at 28 degrees, okay, I'm going to get to my ring stand and I'm going to tie it up. And sometimes you have to tie it and then kind of make sure that you got it in the right. Kind of recheck it and make sure, sometimes you have to adjust it a little bit once you tie it on there, okay. And 
and so that's my 28 degrees okay and so I keep doing that with multiple drops and then when I'm finished I'll be able to do what we call a point of origin I'll measure how high okay once I do all of my drops okay so this is where my strings are attaching themselves to on my um, on my ring stand. So now I know the exact location and now what I can do is I can put this up and I can say, okay, I, my um, assailant had a range of between 14 and probably 19 centimeters off of the ground at this location was where they were. So that might suggest that they were on the ground when they were being beaten or so on and so forth. So that is how you do a point of origin test. Here's an example of a point of convergence. And here are some examples of finished point of origin tests.